What is a play? A play is a form of literature written by a playwright, usually consisting of dialogue between characters. It is intended for theatrical performance rather than just reading. The term play can refer to both the written texts of playwrights and to their complete theatrical performance. Plays are generally classified by their duration, a one-act play, a full-length play, a three-act play, etc., and by their genre, which means their type or kind. There are nine genres we will refer to in discussing plays. They are tragedy, comedy, dark comedy, tragicomedy, farce, history plays, docudramas, melodramas, and musicals. The two original genres were, of course, comedy and tragedy. Tragedy is usually associated with the Greeks and Shakespeare. Tragedy is a profoundly serious play dealing with broad, universal themes. Its characters are larger than life, and it always ends in the death of one or more of the main characters. Comedy differs from tragedy in that it requires a happy ending, and the characters face everyday problems rather than superhuman ones. There are several classifications of comedy. Dark comedy is a comic but disturbing play that ends darkly or ironically. Dark comedies are usually funny at the beginning, but they don't aim to leave us laughing. In modern times, the dark comedy has come to dominate the theater. Tragicomedies are tragedies that allow the hero to live, tragedies that end happily. And farce is a pure creation of the theater that is strictly intended to make us laugh till we cry. It's humorous treatment of a trivial theme, say, mistaken identity, infatuation, money scheming. And it also makes great use of stock situations like identical twins, staged chases, overheard conversations, or misheard instructions. The next genre was created by Shakespeare's editors and it is the genre of history. It encompasses Shakespeare's nine history plays that cover English royal theater. Today, this genre also includes any play that is primarily about a historical figure. The documentary drama is a more recent development, and it utilizes authentic evidence as a basis for portraying relatively recent historic events. Transcripts of famous court trials or stories ripped from the headlines have been a prime source of material for documentary dramatizations. Melodramas are plays that purport to be serious but are, in fact, trivial entertainments. They present a confrontation between good and evil and often use audience participation to gain sentiment. The musical, which is defined by its extensive musical score, is considered America's greatest contribution to the theater. Next, we will discuss the major components of a play. In the 5th century BC, in ancient Greece, Aristotle gave us six components by which any play could be judged. In order of importance, they are plot, character, theme, diction, music, and spectacle. First, plot. Plot refers to the structure of events. Plot is the mechanics of storytelling. It deals with the sequence of the comings and goings of the characters, the timetable of events, and the specific order of the escalations, quarrels, discoveries, etc. that take place on stage. The two primary demands of plot are logic and suspense. Character. The human figures in the play, performed by the actor. Character depth is what gives a play its psychological complexity. Third, theme. The play's overall statement, its topic, its central idea or message. The importance of the theme 
is that the play must have something to say. Diction. Diction refers not only to the pronunciation of the spoken dialogue, but also to the literary nature of the play's text, including its tone, imagery, articulation, and use of such literary forms as verse, rhyme, metaphor, etc. Music. Music refers not only to the actual use of music per se, but also to the play's use of rhythm and sounds. So, the music of a production encompasses songs, offstage music, and sound effects, incidental music played to set the mood before, after, and during intermission, as well as all the sound effects used both on stage and off stage, like muffled drum beats, gunshots, animal noises, telephones, offstage conversations. Spectacle is number six. Spectacle encompasses the visual aspects of the play, the scenery, the costumes, the lighting, the makeup, and props, the overall look of the theater and the stage. Now, to Aristotle's six components, we in the modern theater have added a seventh, and it is called theatrical convention. Theatrical convention is the agreement between the audience and the actor, which includes a whole set of understandings that form the context of the play. They include the aside, the dream state, the elapse of time, the agreement that we will set aside our real life and take part in the life that is appearing before us on stage. This is called a suspension of disbelief. Additionally, the play itself can be divided into four dramatic elements, exposition, conflict, climax, and resolution. Again, these four dramatic elements were given to us by Aristotle. Exposition deals with the background information presented within the play that the audience must possess in order to understand the action of the play. It's the pre-story, if you will. Secondly, the conflict. Drama requires conflict. Conflict and confrontation are what make any situation dramatic. The playwright introduces conflict early in the play, often by means of an inciting incident. And once established, the conflict is intensified and intensified and intensified until it reaches the climax. The climax is the moment of maximum tension, which is followed by the resolution. 